Hey, my name is Leonardo Fuchs, and I, I was trained as an oboist. I used to play in some orchestras like in Curitiba State Orchestra and also uh, Rio de Janeiro Opera House a long time ago. And I also have a degree in engineering. Uh, so I am a professor at the School of Music, Rio de Janeiro Federal University, uh, in music acoustics. I did my PhD in Sweden. Um, and my master's was here in Rio, do, trying to understand the quality of clarinet reeds in uh, production engineering. Um, so my, my not right now I, I keep teaching music acoustics and si voice science at the School of Music. And also I give a, a course on uh, experimental instruments and how to use or try to use them in basic music, musical education and uh, in performance. Well, I talking about free improvisation. I have I, my most of my groups, or the projects I am involved with. I I think uh, takes place. Uh, for some kind of improvisation, uh, my, my the, the Cyclophonica, the bicycle orchestra, it has been running for uh, about 13 years now. And what we do is that we have some basic uh, songs, some basic music, Brazilian music, or let's say classical, like boleros, like Ravel's boleros, and, and some other uh, themes. And we don't have a fixed instrumentation. So this is part of, our, let's say, of improvising because you can really pick the instrument that you want to perform that piece. Also, we are in movement, so it makes our communication completely different. So in the environment counts a lot as well, it affects our performance. And also the position of the listeners and the phase effects and if people are listening to one instrument before the other and, and they are looking at one, they, you, you never see the whole group. So this makes a completely different uh, scenario and uh, environment, sound environment. Well, I don't think that anything is really free. I mean, I don't... It's, I don't believe there's a funny, you know, this kind of expression saying that there is no free lunch, let's say. You know? So nothing is really free. You know, we are never, even if we, we try to make, or we take some drugs or we are drunk, or, we are never free. We are always into some kind of, of, of influence. And I think that, let's say, I, I prefer the idea of free improvisation to, let's say, that kind of standard jazz improvisation that you you have a, a pattern like you I am improvising now and then you play the, the let's say the standard accompaniment and then the, the drums will and then the bass and then the because it's like a, a ritual and then it's it's like a mess it becomes something so uh, predictable that it's not the improvisation is it's not the most important thing even if you make incredible things. The other point of, of free improvisation that I, I think it calls my attention is that uh, if we have to interact with the others, so that there is only free improvisation if we interact. So it's okay, it's not completely free because I'm not playing alone. If I'm an autistic player, I am completely free to do whatever I do, but no one, I don't really communicate with. With the, with the audience or with the other instruments, uh, with the other players. So the point is that if you, the, you become more free if you uh, sort of, uh, of challenge or obliged to interact with another, other players and mostly with the audience. So I think that we should try to involve the audience as much as possible because they, are, they will enhance our freedom. The, the way I see free improvisation is that we have lots of degrees of freedom 
Yeah, I like free teaching as well. As you talk, talking about free performance, I think in free uh, improvisation. Of course, I'm not improvising. If, even if I try to improvise, I say give a completely different class. I am. I have my tracks. You know, my brain is already uh, trained to to provide some kind of information in such a way. But I, I also, I think it's something that you, you should bring also to the class.